Welcome back to Hola y Aloha. I'm your host, Barbara DeLuca, president and co-founder, along with Marisol Ruiz, our vice president and co-founder. We're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. Today, we have an awesome guest. He's also a member of our chamber, Mario Patino. We'll be discussing his award-winning Patino graphic designs and taking your business to another level. Mario Patino is the owner of Patino Graphic Designs. We're very excited to have him here. He's going to talk to us a little bit about himself. Mario, please, I want to hear, you know, who you are, where did you come from? How did you get started in this? Uh, tell us everything good about you, please. Hi, right, thank you guys for having me, first and foremost. Um, so, as you said, my name is Mario Patino, owner of Patino Graphic Design. I'm originally from San Francisco. Uh, I moved out here 12 years ago. Yeah, January would be 12 years. Um, and when I moved here, I, I was always in, in graphic design, um, you know, through school and everything like that. Um, and when I decided to move to Hawaii, I made the choice to just leave my job that I was with, which is a design firm too, and just start my own thing. So as soon as I landed here, I just said, hey, this is going to be it. I'm going to make it happen. So we started Patino Graphic Design and, you know, just been slowly building it throughout the years. Um, been a while so yeah were you were you that child because you know i mean it's art right it's a graphic art um yeah. are you good at like painting drawing like were you that kid that was always into that or because it's a completely different field how'd you get into into that and are you were you that or are you that artistic a uh, person <laughs> yeah um exactly so like all throughout school i was always a kid who was drawing on the, on the desk and used to get in trouble for drawing on all over my desk and all that stuff um, and I didn't really know what graphic design was, um, cause you know, I grew up in the inner city, so we didn't really like, we're exposed to careers such as graphic design. So I didn't even know that, you know, that was a thing, um, until I went to college and then one of my friends had Photoshop on his laptop. Um, you know, we were in the dorm room and then he kind of showed me what Photoshop was and it just like blew my mind. I was like, Whoa, what is this thing? I was like, I need to learn like everything I can about this program. And that kind of got me started. And I just started like teaching myself basically like all the, you know, all the tools and whatnot. And that kind of led to me designing flyers and like little, you know, party event posters and stuff for school. Um, and then just kept building it off of that. So did you initially, sorry, just kind of going back, because I always think it's fascinating to to hear from people like, you know, you might ha have a certain path that you're going to start on and you end up somewhere else. When you were, you said in college, you got exposed to uh, the Photoshop on your on your friend's laptop. Did you have a different major? Were you undeclared? Were you going to take a completely different direction? And then now, thank goodness we have you here. And if so, what was that direction? I was actually going to do Latin American studies. Um, that was my first, uh, that was my first, you know, idea. And uh, my idea was to work with the community and do like outreach type of work. Um, but the art was always there for me. Um, it was always a passion of mine. And then it wasn't until I actually figured out that you can make a living off the of graphic design that I started really pursuing that um, lane and I never turned back from that. That's a great point. This is an awesome segue because it seems that your career path has you know, led you to be able to use your graphic design and incorporate it into working with the community and Latin, you know, America. <laughs> we're so happy that you joined the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii, that you reached out to us. And let's talk about your work with um, not only the Hawaiian community, but the Hispanic community. Recently, you did a, a beautiful campaign for us for the Latino Business Expo and created our logo and all of the, you know, the, the whole campaign was cohesive. If you go to our website, Latin Biz Expo, you can see, you know, the, the fact that we had the, the event flyer that you created to the VIP event with the Terramana, which was also a fundraiser for Maui. We had a lot going on and we even had an after party. <laughs> so thank you so much for your work in the, with us on that project. Yeah, of course. No, thank you. It was, uh, it was truly an honor to be, you know, involved in that. Um, when I first discovered the Hispanic Chamber, you know, I said, oh, this is a, a group of like-minded individuals that I've been kind of searching for my whole time out here. So when I started going to the meetings and stuff, you know, it just made sense for us to say, hey, you know, we're going to try to help out with the, with the logo and the branding for the, because this is the first Latino Expo, right? So, you know, yes. that was a big deal for us to kind of, you know, put our stamp on that. Um, 
And like with any project that we create, right, we start with the logo and then all the marketing materials and the collateral that go with that need to have a cohesive look, which is kind of what you mentioned earlier. So we, we had that in mind when we were designing the logo, you know, it's like, how are we going to do the posters and the banners and the flyers that are going to lead up to this social media post and all that stuff. So it was a whole, uh, yeah, like you said, it was a whole campaign that, you know, we were thankfully able to bring to life and it was a great turn turnout. And it was awesome to see a lot of Latino businesses out here more than, you know, I really honestly expected. Um, so that was pretty surprising. That's true. That's why we founded the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. There's over 700 Hispanic owned businesses out here that, you know, employ 5,600 people and we contribute 500 million to $1 billion in sales to our economy. So it's, it's going to be, it's a growing community and we're, we're so excited to work with you and for this to be a bigger and better event next year. Yeah, totally. No, I'm excited. Um, you know, sign us up for the next one for sure. Yeah, you're you're actually you're our guy. And I don't know if we shared this kind of behind the scenes. I didn't realize actually, and I have a greater appreciation for, you know, because you'll look at a flyer or you'll see an ad and and you see the beauty of it, but I don't think one realizes like what really goes on uh or what the the creative process is mm -hmm. like because we we had some um before you came, we 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 brought you on board. Um <laughs> We tried really hard to, to come up with some some uh, logos and flyers. And I mean, it is a night and day. And it was like, we're so grateful and they're so beautiful, but it's a lot of it's a lot of work. And to capture that vision, I mean, it really does take take artists uh, to be able to do that. So thank you. We're we're so pleased with you and uh, look forward to um, working with you, me personally as well. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned that because a, a lot of clients don't really understand kind of what goes into, you know, a, a design and, you know, what all the different variations and drafts and stuff that we come up with before we even show you anything, right? So we kind of go through our process of, you know, the creative, of where, where are we going to take this design to? And, you know, sometimes it, it's a direction that we don't like personally, so we have to scratch that a different avenue until we get you know somewhere along the right path and then we present it to the client and then we take it from there with some revisions and whatnot but yeah there is a lot that goes um, into design well let's talk about your work with the hawaiian community how did you get involved with the Waianae coast comprehensive health center yeah so they are uh they are one of our big clients right now uh we're super thankful for all the trust they put into us uh, before we came along, they didn't really have a dedicated uh, design firm or marketing department. Everybody was just kind of doing their own thing, like all the different departments were basically doing their own flyers and all kind of DIY type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so when we came on board, you know, we were asking for files, we were asking for logos, and none of these things were around. So we were kind of like, oh, okay, we need to take a step back and assess the entire you know, why I close comprehensive health center as a whole and not just the department that we were initially brought on to work with. Um, and they were super receptive with that. Um, we started off with a few projects with them just to kind of get, you know, our feet wet. And that just been, it has been leading to so much things that we've been doing with them, um, including that shuttle bus that you guys just showed, which uh, for us was, you know, it's, it's, it's a prideful thing because we're able to bring beauty um, to the west side with the shuttle bus designs. Um, before we we touched those buses, the buses were blank. So they just had like a small logo. Um, they were very unassuming, no branding. Um, they were, you know, they didn't stand out. So we started creating a design that would kind of bring pride to the people of the west side when they are on these buses. Um, something that they can, you know, feel attached to and it represents them and the you know the area so we chose different photography that highlighted you know the west side and different you know aspects of the beauty that is around here um and it's just a bus that looks gorgeous going down the road and people are proud to be you know on these buses and using them and you know these things are on the, on the road all day so it was a that was a special project for us just to kind of give back you know mm -hmm. what we can as far as artistic view into the you know into this community that we are a part of actually too. So we're located in Macaw. So it was a, 
it was uh, special to our heart to to work on those projects. Right. I thought I saw a mobile bus um, where you can go get health care. Is, is that a bigger yeah. bus? Yeah, exactly. So with this project, there was four shuttle buses uh, mm -hmm. that we designed and wrapped. And then with the help of Han Blue, who was the installer. And then um, the big one was the mobile clinic bus. Now, that is the first mobile clinic bus that is on the west side operating. Um, and it's full, you know, they have a bed in there. There's, there's all kinds of medical equipment, stuff that people can use. Um, so it's something that can go to a rural area that might not have access to the center. Um, so they can bring a clinic to them. And that was a big project. Um, it was the biggest vehicle that we've ever wrapped. So that was definitely a challenge um, because we were kind of going to it with, you know, unknown. So just learning that entire process and dealing with that kind of vehicle um, was quite the experience and came out great. The blessing, we went to the blessing, they invited us to that. And, you know, there's a really great story behind the name of the bus um, that I can explain later. But yeah, overall, it was an incredible experience to be a part of and super, super thankful for them. How long does a project like that take or to even wrap wrap the, a bus like that? I mean, you said you were getting it as a little uh, unfamiliar territory initially. How long does it take? Yeah, you know, that one was actually, um, it was a pretty long process because um, from the initial concepts that we that we showed, well, first we start with the dimensions, right? So installer will come out, take the dimensions of the bus. They'll give us a template of what the bus looks like with all the contours and all the shapes and everything else. Cause it's a 3D object, right? So it's, you know, from every side, top and bottom and whatnot. It's not just a flat, like a flyer. So you have to take that into consideration, like how things are gonna fit around you know, all these different shapes. Um, so from the time we showed our first concepts and those go through, you know, the proper channels of, you know, uh, revisions and whatnot, that one took a few months um, because it was such a large project and it meant so much to the community. Um, so it was, a, it was a pretty long process. And then the actual wrapping was another, I think a week and a half or so like that. And then you have to, you know, bring it back and do the logistics of, who's going to drive it because you need a, a, a licensed driver to do those those types of vehicles so it was a uh, yeah it was quite the uh, quite the journey on that one but it came out great so we're, we're super thrilled on that one yes so let's talk about your next project in peace yeah in peace is a is a community organization that does great work um they help out a lot in the community they're also a, a, a west side based um, organization in Mayuli. Mm -hmm. um, they also have offices in Kapolei as well, but they basically help uh, community members try to either get kids into preschool, help them with, you know, different types of uh, assistance programs and whatnot. Um, so they, they have their hands in a lot of things. And within Peace, um, we've been producing a lot of their products. So one of the our big parts of our business is promotional products and bringing products to clients that they normally wouldn't have access to here on the island um, just because it's so restricted on what's available here. So we design products for them, such as uh, table covers, pop-up tents, uh, merchandise, giveaways, like if they go to trade shows and whatnot, things that they give out to their, you know, to their constituents and their customers and whatnot like that. Um, so we've been doing a lot of product work for them lately. And it's just another way of us, you know, providing another service to help out you know, all these organizations that, you know, were otherwise trying to do it on their own. So we've kind of try to help fill that void and make their life a little bit easier so they can focus on what they do best, you know, their programs, assistance and all that. And then we can focus on the marketing and the branding and just making sure that they have the best products out there for, you know, to keep the brand going and have that strong visibility. Well, speaking of giving away things and, you know, working with the community, I saw one of your posts recently and you were giving away um, mouse pads to a school in Makaha that needed them. What was that? Um, how did you get involved with that? Um, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um, we, we've been doing a lot of like small donations um, to Makaha Elementary um, this past year and year and a half. Um, it's usually something that we don't really, you know, talk about a lot because I feel like, you know, if you're giving something, you should just give it out of the, you know, the kindness of your heart, not expecting anything like in return. But um, it just kind of brought to me to like the attention that we can do more as entrepreneurs, right? We can use our resources to help out and to give back to the community. 
So I wanted to do a post saying that one of uh, one of our friends is a teacher at McCall Elementary. She mentioned to us that the kids in the computer classes don't have mouse pads. So they were having a hard time, you know, doing their homework because their, you know, their mouse and whatnot just wasn't catching yeah. on. <laughs> so we were like, hey, you know, that's exactly up our alley. That's what we do. Um, it's something that's, you know, pretty easy for us to get accomplished. So we just took it upon ourselves to um, go out, get mouse pads made for them. Um, I delivered them to them last week, I believe it was. Um, and the kids started using, they just sent me some photos the other day. So the kids are like all using them. They're all excited because they have new, you know, mouse pads and things like that. Um, and we also donated t-shirts as well for the schools um, when they go on their field trips. They wanted to have like a cohesive t-shirt that all the kids could wear, you know, also to feel pride about where they come from. And then when, you, you know, and for the teachers, it was good for them because they can see all the kids that they are with and it's easily to point out for safety issues. So that's another, you know, example of things that we've been trying to do on our end to try to help out and give a little bit back to the community here on the West side. So you had to start somewhere getting involved with the community. What was your first uh, project uh, with IHS? How did that happen? And how did that open doors to working with other community members? Right, so IHS is the Institute of Human Services. Um, they're located in town and their main focus is trying to end homelessness in Hawaii. Um, they have shelters throughout the islands. Um, they also do a lot of uh, you know, food programs and things like that. They also help out homelessness with giving them uh, clothes to wear for interviews, which we thought was pretty, pretty interesting because uh, you never think about that. But they were one of our earlier clients and they kind of opened the door for us to step into these bigger accounts because they put their trust in us when we were just kind of just starting out. Um, so for us to get clients like that was a huge deal because we did some amazing things with them and they kind of opened the door of their program for us to kind of just help them out with all their marketing stuff. Uh, we did newsletters, we did brochures, we did their giant 50th anniversary gala, which was at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Um, so that meant a lot to me as a, as a up and coming business owner, just that, a, you know, a company that is this big can put their trust in us. Um, and we delivered and they kept coming back to us, um, which, you know, is a sign of the great work that we've been putting in and all the hard work that we do. Um, so we really take pride in taking these companies, taking these brands and just kind of nurturing them as if it's, you know, our own. Because, you know, at the end of the day, that brand is a reflection of us. So the work that we put out is a reflection of the work that we put in on our end. Most definitely. We all have to start somewhere. And that's what a great opportunity. Yeah. And I like how you say, you know, uh, you know, who we're with or who we represent is a reflection of us, right? Of ourselves or companies. So, yeah, when you're you're out there and you're on these, you know, um, I how do you call it, Barbara? On the... On the staircase there at the mall, everyone's seen. Do you get a lot of business from, you know, do you get referrals that way? How do you get your business? Yeah, um, the funny thing is I don't really advertise um, I, at all, really. Uh, most of it is through referrals, is through doing good work for other companies. Um, and, you know, it's a small island, right? So if you do good work for one company, they'll definitely refer you to another one. Um, and it's just been kind of building like that. So it's really important for us to keep our name intact, to keep the quality of the design works that we do, you know, top notch. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's just been growing organically. Um, and, you know, we have clients on the mainland as well. Um, so it's just a lot of word of mouth and, you know, yeah, he's not lying. <laughs> We offered him a booth at the Latino Business Expo, <laughs> and he yeah. said, "Save it for somebody else." <laughs> yeah, which is like, wanna... yeah, That's thank it. you. Girl. We support each other, right? And so you're talking about growing organically. Um, can you talk a little bit about the lineup at Waikai? What is that? What is the lineup at Waikai? What are you doing? Yes, over there? The lineup at Waikai is a new development in Ever Beach. Um, you've probably seen it around. They have a big surf pool. Um, they have a bunch of activities. There's restaurants, bars. They have a huge lawn. Every Thursday, they do a, a farmer's market um, with hundreds of vendors. Uh, so we've been lucky enough, again, uh, to get in on the ground floor with Waikai when they were first developing it. So we've been with them from the start. Um, and it was really important for them to work with a local design agency 
um, that kind of knew the area, knew the demographics, you know, knew knew the, the type of uh, advertising and marketing that it was going to take to make this successful. So they approached us, which we were super thankful for again. Um, and we've been doing a lot of cool projects with them, including the, the escalator that you just saw on screen that's at the Alamana Center. So we did a huge wrap uh, promoting the lineup to tourism and not only tourism, but also local um, because we want to have local families, you know, go and visit and take advantage of all these amenities that they have there. Um, you know, I take my family there all the time. We were just there on Sunday uh, with our daughter. So uh, it's a really cool place. If you can go check it out. It's in Eva Beach. Um, there's a lot to do. There's outdoor have a, a lagoon, they have bars, restaurants, all kinds of cool stuff. It's a great place. Marisol and I met there. Yeah. Um, yeah. We met a client there, remember? Um, yeah. Have you gone on, have you done the wave pool, <laughs> no. Mario? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave that to the, to the, to the community. Hey, you don't need him injured. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got work to do. Yeah. Oh, t tell us about this um, Pele Award. Ah, yes. So we won uh, last year's uh, bronze Pele for logo design, mm -hmm. which is a really prestigious uh, design award, design marketing and advertising award here in Hawaii. Um, the, every every design company submits something to the Pele Awards every year. It's kind of one of those things that it's like basically like our Grammys, right? So yes. uh, for us to win a bronze was a huge, huge deal uh, because we're going up against the massive design firms the huge agencies that are submitting work that have done, you know, projects for you know everybody and anybody. So for us to go in there and win the the, the award for logo design was just massive, and that's really you know kind of helped establish us in the industry as well. Um, so it's something that we are super proud of and look forward to winning more awards hopefully here in the future. Well, Marisol, I look forward to you helping us with our logos and our brands and our um, real estate business. And me first, you know, me first. Yeah. <laughs> you know the fact that you support women and, and, and designers in a predominantly male, you know, um, industry. So let's let's talk about that. Yeah, so um, I'm a, what you call a girl dad, right? So I have a daughter um, and it's very important for me to raise her in you know a world and society that she knows she's going to have equal opportunity no matter what industry she goes into um, so a big focus of mine is to give young female young talented female designers a chance to kind of grow and learn about this industry learn about design that's usually traditionally uh, kind of a male dominated industry it's changing a lot um, throughout the years there's an amazing talented designers everywhere that are female uh, but for me it's 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 always been kind of a a, a focal point to give uh, young designers a chance to get in on the ground level um, you know and learn as much as they can from me learn um, and you know not only are they like employees of mine but they're all you know I, I take on sort of a mentorship uh, role with them and I try to teach them about business try to teach them about entrepreneurship what it takes to own your own design firm um, so hopefully one day when they're ready, you know, they have all the skills in place to go out into the world and, you know, start their own thing if they want to do, if they want to do that, if they want to follow that route, which is a, a very tough route, as you guys know, being in business. So, <laughs> but whatever they, you know, whatever they decide to do with their career, you know, I want to be kind of a, a, a vessel of information for them. Um, so that's always been very important for me on my end. You said something really important that, you know, entrepreneurship, like for me personally, I don't, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Uh, it takes a lot of, you know, yeah. uh, to make it in whatever industry that is. And yeah. not everybody's built for it, right? Or has been exposed to it. How did, when did you make that shift from, hey, I'm a graphic designer artist to I'm going to do my own thing. And like, where did that come from somewhere? Do you have a background in entrepreneurship or your sphere? Yeah, it's um, it's all my parents. Uh, both of my parents are entrepreneurs. Uh, I grew up around it my whole life. Um, my mom has always, you know, had her own business. My dad's had his own business my whole life. So it's all I've known. Uh, going to work was something that was kind of foreign to me. I always wanted to start my own thing. Um, I I always knew that I was in some way going to be involved in business somehow. So that you know that 
role that I've seen my parents play in my life uh, was super influential to me, and it's something that you know sticks with me to this day. Um, and hopefully, you know, my daughter is, uh, follows in that path, but we'll see. You know, whatever she decides to to go into, you know, we'll support. But yeah, it's all it's always been part of my my DNA, as you can say. Well, we're glad to have you as a member of our chamber and a member of our community in, in Hawaii and the Hispanic community as well. Thank you for joining us today, uh, Mario. Yeah, oh, you're such you, an yeah. asset. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you and everybody at the chamber. Um, it's such a great thing that you guys are doing for you know the community here in Hawaii. Um, like I said earlier when we started, uh, it was kind of a a journey for me to try to find like-minded individuals um, out here because it is a little bit difficult, but you guys are opening the door for something really, really special. And, you know, we're, we're thankful to be a part of it. Can't wait to see what else you guys have planned. And, you know, we're always there to support and help out. All right. Cinco de Mayo, working on it. <laughs> nice. nice. That should be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. We'll do, uh, wow. we'll do another one of those tequila tastings. Those are great. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we have about 15 cases of tequila left for sure. Right? Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, with Terramana's permission, they they told us we can go ahead and keep it and and promote it again at our next event. Uh, so we're working on something. I, will, I I won't say no to a bottle of tequila. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you for joining us today uh, on Hola y Aloha, and thank you to my co-host Marisol Ruiz. Uh, We've been talking with Mario Patino with Patino Graphic Designs, and you can find him on Instagram and on, what is your website, Mario? Uh, mpatino.com, letter M, patino.com. Great. Uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Barbara DeLuca, president and co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Adios y aloha. Adios. Adios.